Hey guys, so listen, let's talk about midnight, right? This is going to be talking about prayer, okay? We're going to talk about praying at midnight. What did God do in the Bible at midnight, okay? And what did the people do at midnight, y'all? Because it has a lot to say about midnight, okay? And we know that evening and morning was the first day. So I thought it was something wrong with me because I've always been a night owl. And I've never been a morning person. And that's because God created the day to start in the evening. So why are we waking up in the morning? <laughs> it says evening and then morning was the first day. We should be waking up at evening, right? Evening and morning was the first day. So I usually stay up at night and I go to sleep in the morning. So listen, Samson, okay, in Judges 13... I'm sorry, 16 and 3. It says, and Samson lay till midnight. He lay till midnight. And then he arose at midnight and took the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts and went away with them, bar and all, and put them up on his shoulders and carried them up to the top of a hill that is before Hebron. This is what Samson did, y'all. It says he lay till midnight. And then he arose at midnight. So evening in the morning was the first day. This is in Judges 16, I mean, verse 3. In Psalms 119, this is my favorite Psalms, okay? This talks about all human problems in Psalms 119. Read it. It's the longest Psalms in the Bible, right? Verse 62, it says, at midnight... I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgments. So when do you rise and give thanks unto the most high at midnight? What was so special y'all about midnight? So I want to talk about this. I want to talk about rising at midnight. This is important when you are learning how to humbly come before the most high. And minister to him at midnight. Why was midnight important? Okay. Listen, Matthew 25 and 6, it says, And at midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. It says, Go ye out to meet him. It says, At midnight. Here we go. Exodus 11 and 4. Okay. And Moses said, Thus said the Lord, About midnight, will I go out into the midst of Egypt at midnight? Then it says in Ruth 3 and 8, and it came to pass at midnight. Listen, listen, y'all. Midnight was important, okay? That the man was afraid and turned himself and behold, a woman lay at his feet. At midnight, this woman, she was laying at his feet. Listen. Acts 16, 25, at midnight, here we go again, y'all. It says Paul and Silas, okay, they prayed at midnight and they sang praises unto God. And the prisoners, y'all, heard them at midnight. (laughs) In Mark 13 and 35, it says, watch ye therefore, watch, okay, stay on your post. Listen, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh at evening, E V E N, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning. So you had evening hours, midnight hours, cock crowing hours, okay? And then you had hours in the morning. Listen, y'all, come on now. Acts 27 and 27, it says, And upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread, it says, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow and continue his speech, y'all, until midnight. Midnight was very important, y'all. Midnight. It's something about midnight. Something about laying at the feet of the Most High, singing praises to Him, crying out to Him. Okay? 
arising at midnight. It's something about midnight. Okay. Acts 20 and 7. Okay. So that was about Paul continuing his speech until midnight. First Kings 3 and 20. It says, and she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me while thy handmaid slept. And laid, okay, in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. This happened at midnight because that's when she arose. Then it says Job 34 and 20. In a moment they shall die and the people shall be troubled at midnight and pass away. And the mighty shall be taken away without hand at midnight. Y'all better be on y'all watch now at midnight. I'm telling you, it's something about the hour of midnight. It's something about the midnight hour, y'all. Y'all better wake up. Listen, Exodus 12 and 29, it says, and it came to pass that at midnight. This is when the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of, in the land, I mean, of Egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh. That sat on his throne until the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of the cattle. Midnight. It was something about midnight. Something about midnight, y'all. Paul and Silas, they had prayed at midnight. They sung praises unto God at midnight, okay? He continued his speech until midnight. Something about that midnight hour. Remember, he said, remember, therefore, thy hast received and heard. And hold fast and repent. He said, if therefore thy shall not watch. I will come on thee as a thief, okay? And thy shall not know what hour I will come upon thee. That's why midnight is important. He said, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the father in spirit, y'all, and in truth. For the father seeketh such to worship him at midnight. Come on now. He said, watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the son of man cometh. What if he come at midnight? Mm -mm -mm. Trying to tell y'all. This is deep, y'all. At midnight, I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgment. He said, blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. Okay. For the day of the Lord cometh y'all for it is nigh at hand. God is a spirit. God is not a religion. God is a spirit according to John 4 and 24. He is a spirit. We are spiritual people having a natural experience. Okay. And it's time for some of us to stop being religious and learn how to become spiritual. Okay. He said God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Okay. Okay. And what is the spirit? 
Because he said, man shall not live by bread and bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. He said, out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. I'm trying to tell y'all. He said, what is thy truth? Thy word is the truth. Sanctify them through thy word. I'm telling y'all, this is what the most high said, y'all. Let's get to it. Let's get to this. Because see now, hold on, y'all. John 17 and 17, sanctify them by thy truth. Your word is the truth. His word is the truth. Second Samuel seven twenty eight. it says, and now, O Lord God, you are God. Your words are true. The word was the truth. I'm not talking about your religion is being your religion being true. I'm talking about the word of God being true. Your words are true and you have promised this goodness to your servant. John 15 and three says you are already clean because of the word I have spoken unto you. Ephesians five and 26 cleansing her by the washing with the water through the word. Listen, John 17 and 19 and for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified through thy truth. Sanctify them by thy truth. Your word is the truth. And ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. It says you are clean through the word which I spoke unto you. John 8 and 40. But now ye seek to kill me. <laughs> this is what Christ was saying. You seek to kill me. A man that have told you the truth. He said, which I have heard of God. Psalms 12 and 6. The words of the Lord are pure words. Okay. As silver tried in a furnace of earth purified seven times. He is a shield to all who take refuge in him. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is flawless. It said it in 2 Samuel twenty two thirty one. Then again, in Psalm 18 and 30, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is flawless. It says the precepts of the Lord are right. It didn't say that your religion was right. It said the precepts of the Lord are right. All right. See, when we get a greater understanding of God's word, we'll start to become more spiritual and we'll lay down our religion because religion is man's way to get to God. Okay, it is. But see, you got to come all the out of religion and you got to sit down and just read the word of God for yourself to get a greater understanding and get revelation. See, when your revelation changed then your life will start to change. You know what I'm saying? And so we talking about the words of the most high. We're not talking about man and man's religion because we know that man's religion is pagan. Okay. All religions come from Rome. Okay. Listen. So the precepts, we talking about the precepts of the most high of the Lord is right. Bringing joy to the heart. Okay. And the commandments of the Lord are rating it. Okay, and it gives light to the eyes, right? And it says they are more precious than gold. Psalms 19 and 10. Than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the comb. I'm trying to tell you. Psalm 19 and 8. The statutes of the Lord are right. Rejoice in the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure. Enlightening the eyes. Okay. Psalm 33 and 4. For the word of the Lord is upright and all his work is trustworthy. That's why I said, let God be true and every man is a liar. Okay. It says, for with you is the fountain of life. Your light 
In your light, we see light. I rejoice in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. Therefore, I admire all of your precepts and I hate every false way. Your promise is completely pure. Therefore, your servant loves it. For this commandment is a lamp. This teaching is a light and the reproofs of discipline are the way to life. Y'all hear this or am I talking to myself? The word is a lamp to my feet. If the word of God, if this word, listen, Listen, y'all, let me, if this word right here, the word, of, I'm talking about the, these are precepts, okay? I'm not talking about your religion. I'm talking about the precepts of the Most High. If the precepts of the Most High, the word is a lamp to my feet, why wouldn't I follow it? Why wouldn't I follow it, y'all? Come on. And a light to my path. This is the light. This is a lamp. Lighten your way, your path is telling you which way to walk. Therein, <laughs> the unfolding of your word gives light. Hello, it says that it informs the simple, it informs the simple minded person, the person who needs wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in this life. It says here. Psalms 119 and 30, the unfolding of your words give light. It informs the simple-minded person. Come on now. Proverbs 10 and 7, whoever heeds instruction, okay, is on the path to life. Whoever heeds instruction, okay, but he who ignores reproof goes astray. If this word is a lamp, to your feet and it is a light to your path why wouldn't you follow the precepts of the most high why not you should be following this book you should be meditating on the book day and night okay so you could be like a tree, a tree planted by the rivers of water y'all listen come on now the word of the, the word of the most high don't lie. He said, let God be true and every man a liar. Okay. He said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and life. They are life. This is your life. Bible, basic instructions before leaving earth. It was a precept. It was laws. He gave us statutes. He gave us commandments. But see, people, they don't have the word of knowledge. They don't have the word of wisdom. Okay, which is a gift from the Holy Spirit. Okay, she's the mother. She comes to teach you all things. Because people don't have certain gifts, they don't know how to read this Bible. Okay, so therefore, if a person don't know how to read it, and if a person don't study it to show themselves approved unto the Most High, listen, they ain't going to believe it. You can't believe something that you haven't even read. You got to read it for yourself. That's why people need to come out of these church. You need to come out and you need to sit down and you need to seek the face of the most high instead of trying to seek after a pastor. OK, and false uh, shepherds. OK, because they don't know the Lord. It says it in the Bible. They don't, these people don't know God. This is why people, y'all, they don't have the word of wisdom. They don't have the word of knowledge and they don't understand this book. OK. This is why you got all of these different religions, but you got one God, the true and living God, and he left us his word, but he said the world would not believe y'all. Listen, I ain't going to go there today because I'll start preaching up on here. People don't believe God. This is why God, this is why he can't do no miracles amongst people. This is why he, people, they operate y'all in unbelief. They don't believe the word of God. They just, they think, oh, this is a Christianity book. And Christians, y'all the most people, okay, y'all so judgmental. Y'all don't, y'all don't accept people from off the streets, okay. You don't go feed the homeless and people on drugs and alcohol. And y'all don't even be, y'all don't want to get y'all 
our hands dirty, but you are sitting in a church all your life, all of your life under a pastor. Okay, see this. I, well, I don't go to church because I don't sit around dead folks. Okay, see, I'm I'm an action taker. I'm a move shaker. Okay, so I be out in the streets. I do outreach. I do ministry. This is what I do. I get my hands dirty with the people. You know what I'm saying? Because people need help, y'all. People are out here suffering, and ain't no God said ain't no truth in the land. It's a family, y'all. It's a physical famine that is in the land and a spiritual famine. And people don't care. They don't care about the word of God. I'm telling you, they won't study to show they self-approve unto God. They won't sit down for years in the face of God. They won't go into isolation, y'all. Do you know what it's like to be called by God? Do you know some of the things that you're going to go through? Do you know that you can die for this truth right here? Do you know they might cut your head off, y'all? Listen, I'm just being real. See, people got religion, but they ain't got God. They didn't, they didn't, see, religion can't give you God. Man can give you religion, but see, God, he got to give you himself one-on-one. -on -one. This ain't something that religion can give to you. That's why people, they seem to be religious, but see, in their heart, God said that their heart is far from him. Because, see, people act religious on the outwards, okay? They, to man. To other people, they act religious. But see, God, he know the condition of your heart. Okay? So you can go play with your religion. But see, you can't come to God with that mess. Because see, he going to strip you. He going to break you down. And then he going to build you back up. And this is why a lot of people, they don't receive the word of God. I ain't talking about your religion. I ain't talking about no Christianity. We know Christianity is pagan anyway. Okay? And I'm talking to you pagan Christians. Because y'all celebrate every, every holiday. Okay? That American... um this country was founded upon. Y'all celebrate pagan holidays. You're not supposed to uh, celebrate pagan holidays. You're not supposed to follow the ways of this world when you come when you come to serve the true and living God. Because all of y'all holiday, even if you say you Muslim and you celebrate Thanksgiving, you still a pagan. Because God, He don't dwell in these pagan holidays amongst these pagan people. All of these holidays in America, this listen, this whole country is founded upon lies. Okay. Okay, listen, y'all, I'm just telling y'all the truth. Okay, it's time, it's a hot time for y'all to wake up. Y'all celebrating Halloween, and then you got Halloween. How you say you're a Christian and you let your kids go out there and celebrate Halloween? Okay, candy kill you anyway, and sugar, they put sugar in everything. Listen, you can't be saying you're a Christian and you celebrate Halloween and you going to the uh what's it called? Trick or treating on people door. That's a wicked holiday, okay? Just like in Mexico, they celebrate the day of the day, okay. This stuff is pagan. Paganism uh, is Thanksgiving is pagan. Christmas is pagan. The y'all New Year's is pagan. Okay. Easter is pagan. All of this stuff. Stop saying y'all Christians and y'all y'all tolerate these idol gods that y'all serve every year. Okay? Why don't you celebrate the feast days of the Most High? Why don't you truly come back to the Most High and keep his law, statutes, and the commandments? Nobody keeps the Sabbath day. Everybody worships on Sunday. I wonder why. Who gave y'all that? Who told y'all to go to church on Sunday? See, our people, they didn't know how to read this book. But see, once God give you the uh, words of wisdom and the words of knowledge, see, you will come all the way out, okay? And you will really be set apart for the most high, okay? And you ain't, people ain't going to like you. Then you're going to have to walk by yourself because people, they going to think you crazy. They're going to say, well, why you don't do this? And why your kids, they don't go to the public school system? And why? Because they ain't teaching our history in the public school system. No way. So why you want to send your kids? kids there for what reason for what reason come on now let's be real this was a hit listen it, it's a lot of history in this book and then they give it to you and say 66 no baby it wasn't no 66 books it was more books in this bible okay and that's why you got to study to show yourself approved unto god it was 21 22 books mentioned in this bible that are lost people won't even tell you that okay you better go watch my video about the lost books of the bible because there's more books than that so you can't give me a half of a book with 66 book in 66 books in this and tell me it's the truth it ain't the whole truth. 
Because you got more books. That I wonder why. Why did they hide or hide these books? See, you better understand the Bible secrets and see God. He shares his secrets with his servants, the prophets. And he, listen, y'all, y'all better stop playing like this book is 60. This book is more than 66 books, baby. Moses had more books. Okay, wasn't just the first five books of Moses. Come on now. Listen, I ain't even going there. I'm getting too hyped. I'm going to have to end this. But y'all better rise at midnight. Because <laughs> it was something about the midnight hour. And God, I'm telling you, if you're not in a position right now to bring yourself back to the Most High, you better get ready. Because he's everybody. Everybody. We in the year of 5785, y'all. Y'all better get ready. Y'all better know what year we coming up in. Because I'm telling you, you're going to have to be, you're going to have to go back to prayer. I'm telling you, he's taking us back, y'all, to the basics. And... This is what it's going to be. This is if he going to show himself. If you don't believe him, you going to believe him by the time he get done doing what he come to do in this earth. You going to believe him then and you going to be listen, you better ride with the angel armies because I'm telling you you going to need to be hid under the secret uh shadow of the most high. Listen, cuz I'm telling you it's it's going down. If y'all don't believe what I'm telling y'all, Y'all better get ready. I'm not. Listen. Y'all need to listen. Look at this. I'm going to show y'all this book. Y'all need to go read this book. Okay. Go read this book, y'all. Okay. I'm telling y'all what I know to be true. I'm not a fool. Okay. <laughs> Far from it. Even though I done made some foolish decisions. Listen, y'all. Y'all not ready. See, people don't have a word of wisdom. They don't have a word of knowledge. They don't study. They don't search for wisdom. They don't seek her out. Come on, y'all. Come on. I'm about to start getting into the angels. The archangels. Some of the names, y'all. Okay? We about to get into this. I'm about to share this stuff with y'all. Because I got some Hidden knowledge, some ancient wisdom. Okay, I'm gonna share it all with you. I'm gonna get God said, Freely I have give, so I'm gonna give back. You know, I'm gonna give y'all wisdom and knowledge and understand because this stuff, y'all, this stuff is real. It's a high time for us to wake up for real. People are still celebrating holidays and stuff. This stuff is pagan, y'all. Mm -mm -mm. It is better to heed a wise man's rebuke. Do y'all hear that? Hold on. Ooh, for the Lord giveth wisdom. It says, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. It says, thy commandments has made me wiser than my enemies. <laughs> Consider and hear, O Lord my God, lighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. You don't want to sleep the sleep of death. You want to wake up. You want the precepts to quicken you in his righteousness. This is why you got to long after his precepts, y'all. I'm telling y'all. I'm telling you. It says Psalm 40 and 8. I delight to do thy will, O oh my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. You want the law to be in your heart. Okay? You want the law to be in your heart, y'all. I'm telling y'all the truth. It's a high time for y'all to wake up. It's time for you to wake up. <laughs> it ain't no time to be trying to sleep, y'all. You don't want to sleep the sleep of death. So, I love y'all. I'm done. I'm done. That's a whole sermon for today. I am done. Listen, I'm here. I am sent me to help you break free from generational curses, pull down strongholds, and to break free from addiction, y'all. That's it. That's what I'm called to do. I teach you how to go from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Okay? That is my role. I teach you effective spiritual warfare so you can stop getting beat up in the spiritual realm. So you can stop tolerating idolatry. Okay? <laughs> I think I said it right. Listen, because I'm hyped up. I'm amped up, y'all. I might be back with another mess. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, I'm amped up. 
Y'all got to stop being ignorant. The Bible tells us this too. I'm telling y'all, be not ignorant of anything in a great matter or a small. This is in Ecclesiasticus 5 and 15. It says, be not ignorant of anything in a great matter or a small matter, y'all. I'm telling y'all. This is some deep stuff, y'all. This is deep. That's all I got to say. And God, even in Thessalonians uh, chapter 4, 13 through 18, he said, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. <laughs> you know, he don't want us to be ignorant. He don't. He ain't called us to be ignorant people, y'all. And I'm going to tell you what ignorance calls. When you become ignorant, right? This is when Satan should get an advantage of you. When you become ignorant. And it says that for we are not ignorant of his devices. You're not supposed to be ignorant of Satan's devices. You're not supposed to be ignorant, y'all. This is why you need to understand how to do effective spiritual warfare. You need to understand how to pray, okay, the word of God, how to study the word of God. You need the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge. You need help, you know. We need help. We don't want to receive the spirit of the world, but we want to receive the spirit of God that we might know the things which are freely given to us of God. We want to know all this stuff. I do. I know I do. I ain't trying to be no fool. I didn't been foolish long enough. We need faith in God's power. This is why he's saying my, my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words, not of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of the power. That your faith, your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And it says here, how about we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world. We don't talk about the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of the world. That come to not. Okay. But we speak the wisdom of God. In a mystery y'all. Even the hidden wisdom. Do you see this? This scripture said it is hidden wisdom. We speak the wisdom of God. In a mystery. Okay. I love the mysteries of God. I love the secrets of the most high. I like when he shares stuff with me. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Which none of the princes, y'all, of this world <laughs> knew. None of the princes know. Even the hidden wisdom. This is why, listen y'all, I'm telling you, this is why kings, okay, consulted prophetess. Okay, in the Bible, kings, because it says that the princes of the world knew not. They did not know. None of the princes of this world knew. For they had, for had they known it, they would have not crucified y'all. <laughs> the Lord of glory. Okay. That's why it says, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, the things which God had prepared for them that love him, y'all. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searcheth all things, yea, even the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of a man which is in him? Even so, the things of God, the things of God, listen to this, knoweth no man, 
but the spirit of God. Listen, y'all, this is deep. This is so deep. Which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, okay, but which the Holy Spirit teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So we want to compare spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man, let me tell you why some of y'all struggling still with generational curses and pulling down strongholds and trying to break free from addiction. Right here, I'm gonna it says. But the natural man, your natural self, okay, it says, receive it not the things of the spirit of God. When you in the natural, you cannot even accept the things of God for they are foolishness. So somebody could be listening to me talk about this stuff right now. And it sounds foolishness to them. And it's because they are in the natural man. And because they not in the spiritual man. And they're in the natural. They receive it, not the things of God. They are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. This is what the words say. For he that is spiritual, though, judgeth all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. <laughs> Listen, y'all. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. We do. I'm going to end it on this note. I have the mind of Christ. Say it out loud. And listen, we're going to compare spiritual things with spiritual things. I love you and make sure you arise at the midnight hour. Okay.